Welcome to the Eric Saint Show podcast. Uh, looks like Darla hit the camera. That's not good, which means I have to adjust it. Most good podcasters would do this before the show actually gets started. The key is the Irvine's sign must be in the shot. Uh, welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. The Eric Zane Show podcast. We have begun yet again. Uh, a trip to the vet yesterday. Nothing emergency wise. I got done with the uh, Patreon bonus podcast and I looked and it was 12.10 p.m. It's like, Jesus, I got to go. I shut that thing down really quick. And then uh, I have a, a method to cat wrangling. Dog, it's simple. Get in the truck. Okay, bye. Cats, different. You got to uh, put food in the food bowl. And then Lincoln comes out. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up? It's time to eat again. And then grab that fat ass and uh, put him in the car thing. A really good cat, by the way. I mean, just doesn't give you any bit of shit. Doesn't bite you. Doesn't hiss at you. Doesn't scratch you. Great cat. This is a one-eyed cat. And it's like he's growing another eye. Uh, in 2017, he had an eye removed. He actually got a cancer eye. Go figure. Um, and we don't know yet if that enucleation is what it's known as ripping the eye out is what's causing this. But the other day I'm like, there's this big mass right above the eye in the general area of the eye zone where the eye was. And it's like uh, squishy and weird. And so, yo, okay. Is, uh, as we, as we, I'm like, I, I take the vet in there. They do a series of tests. They go, yeah, we don't think that there's, we don't think there's anything really here, but uh, let's do a uh, ultrasound. All right. Okay, fine. I'm not one to just say, eh, don't worry about it. I always, I always have to know. I'd, I'd rather go into a life-changing debt than to just let something possibly be wrong go wrong. I know it sounds weird, but so yesterday was the ultrasound. She goes, well, there's no mass. It just appears to be fluid there. But this is so strange because it isn't okay. It's six years ago. This, this sounds like a complication that would take place right after eye enucleation. Why this is happening now, we don't know. This is a this is a mystery. Tyler knows where I'm going with it. Let's add on another thousand. Oh, uh, I mean, let's do an ultrasound. So now when I call to get the update, I mean, I want the cat to be okay, but I also want to hear, all right, clean bill of health. Clean bill of health. Okay, good to go. Instead, I got... Uh, we don't think it's anything to be worried about. But... We want you to take the dog to a uh, animal optometrist. I'm like, oh, fuck me. I go, okay. I go, what about if I just do nothing? They go, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know? Because the last thing you want, because cats, especially this cat, has like a tendency to not let you know when there's problems. Like when they're in pain. For some reason, that happens more with cats. You, They may actually be in great discomfort and you don't know it. So spend the cash. Have the uh, optometrist look at like, oh, shit. Made the call. Scheduled. Fuck. Wenji says animal optometry equals life savings gone. 
Maureen says it's not weird. It's what a loving and responsible pet owner does. This is strange. We're talking about getting the cat's eye looked at. And Kenny pulls an Amanda and makes it about him. What are you doing? He writes, <laughs> hey, mate. Healthcare debt is something I'm becoming very familiar with lately. My chiropractor told me someone had come in. Or, dude, what are you talking about? We're talking about pets. And you're talking about you. How do you do that? Is that just me or is the audience like, oh, no, that's that's totally makes sense. Between you and Amanda, pulling in Amanda, making it about you, this is why, again, reason number 8 million, why you two need to be having sex. Jesus. Yeah, you mentioned going into debt, dummy. Okay, cool. Amanda says, yeah, Kenny, shut up. Oh, no, don't start. Don't start, because then he's going to say something terrible to you, and then it's, it's going to be really ugly. Kenny says, I just joined. That part was all I heard. Yeah, you do that all the time, though. You hear one word is, oh, man, I must contribute. Jesus. Just let me do my job. Why can't that happen for once? Uh, Brandis asks if she's the only one having a serious lagging issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, Corey says, I just joined and have no idea what's going on, but Eric is in the wrong. Megan goes out of her way to tell us she had sex. She says, does sex count as a workout for us fraudulent fatties? All right. Um, uh, yesterday I was a, uh, a victim of road rage. In between, sandwiched by two examples of zipper merge by your old pal EZ. And I'm really proud of how both of these scenarios went. Hey! Um, right by my house, I was actually getting the cat. I had the cat in the, uh, in the truck. I was going to the vet and I had to get there. I couldn't, I couldn't be late. And very important I'd be there on time. And where I live in Jenison in the street called Baldwin, right at the intersection of Baldwin and Cottonwood, they've got like, um, it looks like they're working on the gas line or something. So they have a merge there, the right lane going into the left lane. And it's a half mile backup. And the right lane has zero cars in it. Zero. This is wrong. In the right lane, there's the cones, which slowly uh, uh, narrow the lane with the arrow pointing. And it's ideal zipper merge. So I throw that fucker up into the right lane. And I start picking up speed. Time out. Amanda says, hold up. You mentioned Kenny and Amanda having sex. That's when I asked. I said nothing about myself. Okay, you're, you're clear. I thought you were talking about you. All right. Um, so I am now, I'm now uh, uh, up to speed in the right lane. As I approach the end of the uh, lane that's ending, I just back off the gas a little. So now uh, the people in the left are starting to move because the light has turned green and they're just starting to, to roll and I'm matching their speed. But I can still speed up because I got a little bit of lane left and then zip 
right in. Right in front of everyone. It was fantastic. I don't know why everybody gets over so damn soon. Ridiculous. To end the day, I'm driving in from um, uh, Rockford. I was at North Kent Golf Course. Hosting an event with the Grand Rapids Gold. I'm driving back and I see nothing but brake lights. There is a uh, a narrowing. They're going down to one lane. Very slow go. And I'm trying to figure out. I don't even know what lane is ending at this point. As soon as I find out what lane is ending. Um, more often than not. They're doing it incorrectly. And I will use that lane to my advantage. As I'm cruising along. I noticed that two trucks are occupying the lanes. And I'm like, boy, they're going the identical speed. What's up here? And I take a look. It seems the left lane is ending. And a trucker is blocking. He's blocking the lane. He doesn't want and He wants everybody getting over. When he says, as opposed to, you know, doing it the right way. So I'm like, okay, I get right behind the trucker. I'm actually two cars behind. There's the semi and then a minivan and then me. And in front of the trucker is about one mile of roadway. That's how early this fucking dumbass has, is he's blocking everybody. Now, again, you're supposed to use that lane up until it ends. Um, Donko says, I have called the phone number on the back of semis to complain about this. Uh, I was behind that minivan and that semi for about 10 seconds and then Darla and then I threw it on the shoulder Uh, my wheels actually off of the road off of the shoulder into grass and I'm into the gas (laughs) on the horn as I pass that motherfucker (laughs) get right in front of the now I'm back on 131 I'm back on the freeway and I am in front of him flying i am doing the speed limit and again though i've I've described this before to prevent another vigilante from throwing it out in front of you you must go fast so that when they look up in the rear view mirror you're filling it up scaring the shit out of them and you get close to the center line like wheels tires on the center line the stripe white stripe, you know, in between dividing the line, because if they even think about inching now, they're, they're going to think, Oh fuck. I better not. This is a lunatic. I cannot do this. Now I'm doing everything by the book. I, I am obeying the speed limit. I am obeying the zipper merge. I am still technically in my lane and no one is fucking with me. I go the entire distance of that slowdown. And I went all the way up to that arrow and then got over zip. Right then. And then I noticed people behind me were starting to do it. Go around that butt fuck motherfucking asshole cocksucker son of a bitch trucker. Fuck you. You asshole. Jesus. Now this all happened on the way to the golf outing or to the vet, which is just before the golf outing on the way back from the golf outing. But the best part is the sandwich of road rage in between those two zipper merge uh, fiascos. Well, I, I can't call them fiascos. They were they were fantastic. By the way, I think Kenny um, uh, uh, left. What? What is that all about? Aram, who's kind of a... Aram might be the biggest um, bleeding heart of them all. He writes, yeah. see what you all did. Kenny left. Well, why would Kenny leave? Because I picked on him? I pick on him every day. 
I don't, it's not my fault that I'm talking about going to the vet and, and, and Kenny starts telling us about going to the chiropractor. He, if he's leave if he's butt hurt because of that, well, today's going to be, oh, man, that's it. I'm drowning my sorrows. Somebody call Domino's. <laughs> that's what, that's what Kenny and Amanda do when they get frustrated. They like go to Burger King. And then uh, Amanda says, well, Aram, if you can't take the heat, get your ass out of the kitchen. At least Amanda hangs around when I destroy her daily. (laughs) Florida man says, this is because I've made a reference to him saying, go suck Dean's dick. Well, at the end of the day, if he's leaving because he's butthurt, well, then there's nothing I can do about that. I don't feel bad about that. So um, the road to the golf course, um, I'm traveling along and I have to make a left turn on this reasonably busy road. It's This is in the middle of nowhere. Okay. This, and, uh, but I got to make a left. And uh, I'm like trying to time it out, you know, and I see there's a pickup truck coming to my right, but I can more than easily make it. I do have to get into the gas a little bit. I don't want to slow the guy down or anything, or uh, I want to get up to speed quickly. And I, I figure it out. Okay. As soon as this one to my left passes me, I'm going to take off and then I'll be off and running. So uh, I do that. I start my turn, get into the gas and um, <clears throat> I'm quickly getting up to speed. And I look in my rear view mirror and the guy behind me is waving both middle fingers at me and he's holding them like for extended time. And I'm like, well, that's an overreaction. First of all, I didn't cut you off. I merged safely and quickly and I didn't even slow you down. I don't know what the fuck your problem is. The reason why he's doing this is because he's a Trump supporter. He has to be. Only a Trump supporter would be this much of an asshole. Okay. This is why I don't want, I don't want, I don't want Trump to win because these assholes will probably do something like shoot me. So I did what any reasonable troll would do. I slowed down to 40. Now he's really pissed. He's flashing his lights. He's honking his horn. He's giving me the finger and I'm acting like I don't see him. I'm not waving back. I'm just keeping my eyes forward. My, my head is forward, but I'm like looking in the rear view mirror, giving myself the side eye to see him. And boy, is it funny. So he can't pass me because the other lane is just people coming the other direction. So this goes on for a couple miles. I am, I am, it's a 55 mile an hour zone. He wants to do 65. I'm doing 40. At this point, there's a small gap in the traffic coming towards me. The next vehicle looks to be an 18 wheeler. He makes his move. He throws it into the lane that the 18 wheeler is in, but still quite a distance from us and punches it. So do I. So now we're drag racing. My 327. I'm like white knuckling motherfucker. Yeah. And he's fucking taken off. We're dragging through the countryside. With an 18-wheeler going right at dude. He starts to get over while he's still next to me. At this point, I relent. I get off of the gas. (laughs) He gets in front of me. And the way I'm smiling now is the way I'm smiling. I was smiling then and waving at him (laughs) as he's looking at me in the rear view mirror. Oh, fuck. (sighs) 
And then I, uh, I got right on his ass and was tailgating him the whole time. And eventually I ran out of road and I had to get on the freeway and he kept going. What an eventful day. Nate says, you're a pussy. You should have held the line. LOL. What if I did? What if I did hold the line? And then he got into a head-on collision. Do I keep going at that point? Oh, wow. I think something just happened. He'd have gotten over. No, you're right. I sh- uh, part of me wishes that I would have held the line. Yeah, Corey says, yes, keep going. Not your problem. Nate says, don't look back. LOL. <laughs> oh, my God. That was incredible. This, this is how people die on the roads, by the way. Because you get um, the wrong person, like two idiots who are both armed. And then they agree to pull over. And everybody's got a gun up here. And the next thing you know, there's an actual gunfight, like Wild Wild West going on. But it was fun. A little bit stupid, but I don't care. Uh, Chris writes, it's Kyle's fault. People still don't use the zipper merge. Well, he's definitely part of the problem. All right. Today... Start of the day. Uh, it's, it's remarkable because I went to bed and I was uh, 180. Wait a second. 182.6. And then because of my bladder issues, I peed all night. And uh, by the time I got up, I was 180.6. I peed out two pounds of pee. I know pee is not measured in pounds, but uh, water weight does is a lot of weight. You know, it doesn't take much to equal a pound. Uh, that's where I sit right now. 180.6. Uh, I feel great. I feel like I went downstairs yesterday and got a five pound weight because that's basically what I've lost. Um, I guess it's, no, it's uh, it's almost six now, and I'm I'm just holding that thing, and I'm like, my God, where did it go? What where does it vanish to? The fact that there was that much fat on me, that much grossness, or whatever it is, and suddenly it's gone. Well, what happened to it? It had to change form, right? Isn't that uh, some theory that you learn in, uh, in, in, uh, in grade school? Energy is not created nor destroyed. It merely changes from one form to another. So what the hell happens? Jesus. Uh, but anyway, uh, feel good. Hope you all do too. Keep at it. Fraudulent fatties for life. Fraudulent fatties for life. Ryan says, I wish I could just magically lose weight by urinating. I'm stagnated and have seemingly lost no weight. Losing all hope. Oh, come on. You're doing something wrong. You are absolutely doing something wrong. It's math. You have all of the things within your power to do all of the necessary math to lose. If you take in 2000 and burn 2,500, you're losing. Are you adding, are you to a point where you've stagnated? Try adding up the actual amount of food you're consuming. Write it down. All right. Uh, that piece of bread was 70 calories. Read. You're not trying hard enough. If a person can't lose weight in today's day and age, they're just stupid. You're a stupid soul or you give up too easily or you're not trying at all. Ben always tries that shit with me and I try to beat him over the head. He's like, oh yeah, I've, I'm the one person in the world who uh, can take in less food and get fatter. It is not true.
Uh, Kent says, not always true. When I was a marathon, when I was doing marathon training, I got to 204 and couldn't go lower no matter what I did. Look, that you're, it's your fault. You're, you're doing it wrong. It's, I, you can't argue with math. It's, it's just mathematics. If you, if you want to argue with math, you're going to look silly. You're going to lose every time. You can't blame the math. I don't care what you say about muscle gain over fat loss. Are you telling me there's no way you could possibly be less than 204 pounds? That's ridiculous. Okay. You're 1 million percent wrong on this one. Um, so there you go. Keep at it. Keep losing weight. Keep working. Come on, Kent. Kent's got some, he's figured it out, but he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. My body was storing energy for 12. Who are you? Iron man. Come on. You guys trust me. Just stop trying to figure this out and just follow the math. Hitting a plateau is normal. Tyler says, no, no, that's an excuse for fatties like you. When you suddenly hit a bump in the road. Oh, well, that's it. I guess I'll just be 40 pounds overweight for the rest of my life. There's nothing I can do. I haven't lost weight in three days. Come on. Get your head out of your fat ass, Tyler. Aram says, if you get down to 0% body fat, the only way to lose weight would be to lose muscle. Yeah, I guarantee you Kent was not down to 0% body fat. Oh, yeah, I was 204. There was no way. I was, I had no body fat on me. I was 1 million percent ripped. Come on. All right. Nevertheless, welcome into the show. So glad you are here. Uh, The show on Facebook, X, and YouTube is about to go away on you. If you want the rest of the show, you have to go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live or download the Twitch app and just search Eric Zane Live. The audio podcast is made available shortly after this finishes. Uh, Wherever you download shows, just search Eric Zane Show Podcast. And you will be all set. I do a Patreon. Going to get back to uh, uh, Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer Trivia today. We've missed a few weeks. Dale will be joining us, taking on Ryan in in uh, trivia for a $25 cash prize. Looking forward to that. Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer Trivia today. Uh, and plenty more on um, uh, Patreon as well. We're going to do an edition of Who Are These Zanes on a Big Fraud Wednesday. Who are these Zanes live followed by the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Very busy for a Wednesday. Another big fraud Wednesday on who are these Zanes. We're going to go back to May of 2001 on a WIMZ when Billy Kidd and your old pal EZ were excited to be on the air because a uh, friend of the show at the time um won the show Survivor. Her name is Tina Wesson. You may remember she won the second ever um, series of season of Survivor. Richard Hatch, remember him, the naked guy? He won the first one. Uh, This lady named Tina Wesson from Knoxville won season two. So we watched the show the night before. We had like a watch party or some stupid shit like that. And then we show up the next day and like, that's all we wanted to talk about was how this chick won a million dollars. So that will be May. It was May of 2001 when that show happened. I always equate it to 9-11 to think that on May 4th, 2001, when we did that show, um, the world was so much different. Corey says, oh yeah, the older lady with fake boobs. That's exactly right. All right. That's all what happens today. 
I'm going to kick you all out that are enjoying the show on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Thank you, though, for being here. Facebook and Twitch, brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X, brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Um, The open and live stream of today's show, brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Thank you to them, 616-200-8550 the managed IT service provider of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Working hard for medium or small and medium-sized businesses to make sure that they have the IT services that they they wouldn't normally get. Basically, if you're a small or medium-sized business, you can actually get all the IT support that you need for just a few dollars a month. They can also help you if you're looking to uh, update your tech at your business. Just reach out to Blue Frost IT and uh, sit down for a complimentary 30-minute consultation, and they'll tell you exactly what you need to upgrade everything at your business. Monitors, keyboards, hard drives, routers, you name it. Uh, Reach out to Blue Frost IT, 616-285-50. Yesterday, uh, I knew something was up when... um, a lot of people started sending me the same video. It's from last night's Monday night football game. There's two angles I want to show you. And uh, I, I do like to give you a warning when these things happen, but uh, you're going to see one of the most comical, comically distorted leg breaks you're ever going to see. The angle of Nick Chubb's leg is just ridiculous. This is the equivalent of like snapping a chicken bone. If you want to reenact it on your own, eat some chicken and then just break the bone in front of you. This leg is so broken. But after he broke his leg, I'm assuming it's broken unless of his legs made of rubber. When you see it, you'll be like, oh, of course it's fucking broken. Um, The guy from Pittsburgh, his name is uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, dove at Nick Chubb's knee. Someone wrote, whether you say it's dirty or just football is up to you, but Minka Fitzpatrick undoubtedly dives at Nick Chubb's knee. uh, Fitzpatrick's decision and the injury itself looks even worse from the other angle ESPN is not showing. I have that angle. Some nice person uh, recorded it with their phone off the TV and um, posted it to Twitter and now every American has seen Nick Chubb's knee explode into a billion pieces. So I'm going to be talking like this for the next several minutes about Nick breaking one of his sticks right on the field. It's bad. Uh, Megan says she's out. Maureen says it's muppety floppity. Aram says multiple ligament tears. Obviously, I'm milking this for all the time I can. But at some point, I'm going to have to actually show it to you. And what we have here is just what people saw on TV with um, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. I'm going to play this in its entirety for you. This is not where you will see the gruesomeness. Nick Chubb is getting the ball. He's wearing the white uniforms for the Cleveland Browns. Audio check, video check. Here we go. Good things here in this game. Here's Chubb trying to pick his way inside the five, and he does. Knocked down at the three. Ball came out, but he was down. Minka Fitzpatrick gets the tackle, but he gained a five. Now, look, he's down on the field. The announcers don't know what's happened, and he's holding his leg like he just twisted it or something. But it's fucking broke. 
I think it went all brokey, flippity, crackety, and then kind of went back. Went back the way it was. So you might think he just got like a bump or something, but that's not the case at all. It's totally busted. Here in this game, here's Chubb trying to pick his way inside the five, and he does. Knocked down at the three. Ball came out, but he... Like someone's trying to help him up, and he's like, no, 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 I ain't going anywhere. He was down. Minka Fitzpatrick gets the tackle, but he gained a five. And the last thing any Browns fan wants to see, Nick Chubb holding his left leg. Oh, boy. And then the guy who who went for his knee is also injured, but who cares about that guy? And Minka Fitzpatrick is down for the Steelers. Now this, there's uh, while this is all happening, uh, uh, Joe Buck and uh, Aikman are probably be, being given instruction in the booth about uh, the injury. I am told that the replay of Nick Chubb getting injured is not to be seen. Yeah, it's we're not going to show it. It's. Uh, Did you hear that groan from the crowd? They just saw it on the jumbo truck. It's, it's as bad as you can imagine. They just showed it on the big screen here in Pittsburgh and the crowd gasped. Oh no. Okay. How many of you are actually excited to see this thing explode? Uh Maureen says I used to not be able to watch these types of things, but I think Eric has desensitized me to them now. Brandis says, I'll be back later. I don't blame you. It's bad. Ryan says, I'm very excited. This should take away my appetite to eat breakfast. Great diet plan. Uh, All right. What the fuck? Where is it? Okay. Hold on. Okay. (laughs) Oh, dear, dear. My God. We're starting to get it right there. You can see what's happening here. Now, if nothing else happened at that point, that would still be terrible. So he's, okay, this guy, look at him. He just dove right for his knee. Oh, my God. Let me make sure I'm I'm actually showing you this. That would be embarrassing if I wasn't. Okay. All right. If you are just listening to the audio podcast, this is something you must click on. It's in the show notes. All right, boom. And then his foot plants. Now it already looks like a raggedy Ann leg. And then he keeps going, but the foot stays there. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Okay, now look at that. That is a perfect right angle. Come on. That foot has not moved. What an incredible piece of videography. How how did it not come off? Get the fuck out of here. That is stomach turning. We all, what? it? He kept going. Oh, and then he's laying on the field and it's like, fine. Everyone's like, yeah, come on, get up, get on your feet. What are you doing? Quit fucking around. Oh, no. Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. Take this, bitch. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, Tyler says that's 90 fucking degrees at his tibia. PSN bleach. Glad I skipped breakfast. I don't think I've ever, the, uh, 
it's one thing Theisman was kind of at uh, at real speed. I I, I don't know. We we made it, it was Theisman was a little bit more obscured, I think. But this was what a what a someone should get an Emmy for that that close up shot. That is wow. Ryan says he's absolutely fucked. Like instant retirement, right? I'm guessing there's oftentimes a concern when you get in front of the orthopedic like that night when he goes to the hospital. A concern of like amputation. Holy shit. And man, that uh, that clip came in fast and furious. Think about it. Minutes after it happened, I had it in my... um. Um, inbox and um, and that is remarkable because they didn't even show it again on TV somebody had to get the had to get it off their television somehow somebody had to show an angle I don't know how the hell that happened and then uh, for, for it to race around the world five times uh, incredible and then it gets sent to me by so many different people Megan says that's so much less awful than others we've seen. Maybe, but to me, the worst one is always the one I'm watching. You know? Uh, I think they can get much worse when the bone pops out of the skin. As Rick Pitino said, when, remember that one where the guy from, um, I think it was from Louisville. It was uh, during the tournament years ago, and he was just like dribbling. He didn't even do anything. He's just running normal, and then his leg fell off, and it actually flew out of the skin. And then Rick Pitino was interviewed after, and he goes, "The bone was popping out of the skin." Whew. Maureen says, "How was he even sitting with his knee bent afterwards?" Tyler has knees over toes should get him back on his feet in no time. Kevin Ware was the guy. That's right. Willis McGay, he had a fine career after his college injury, which was as bad. As bad. Corey says his bone looked like the cliff in the Lion King. Ooh, Aaron brings up a good one. Backyard wrestler, that dude who jumped like one foot in the air and broke both his sticks at the same time. Remember I talked to his sister about that? My God. Well, I'm guessing there's been a lot of people to drop Nick Chubb from their fantasy teams. Shoo. Incredible. All right, it's time for a palate cleanser. We're going to go into uh, John Jamingo's favorite bit. It's called uh, Around the Radio Dial. Okay. We got to get this out of our system. There you go. That's much better. Uh huh. Oh, epic, epic. Star Wars like. You to be a part of it. So mark the date, Sunday, October 8th. Find tickets and info on this event that's been 50 that's years in the Rock. making at WCSG.org. Yeah. Kristen Rock always sounds so epic and grand. Like maybe you like the Bears, but you're hibernating in Panthers territory. Talk back, Mike, on our free iHeartRadio app. And tell us what to play next on B93. Yeah, like like that's how it goes. People just send in messages and say, hey, play, play this song. And then the DJ gets out the record and spins it. Wake up in the morning. We 
wanted to have a birthday party for her, but her best friend's birthday is the next day, and her parents have already said, no, uh-huh. we're having yeah. a party Tell on your more. kid's birthday instead. Yeah. We don't really know what to do. Okay. Do just have a party and compete. I don't know. Parents, Wait, so break it down for us. For having her birthday. Okay. Birthday. Do you work around it? We would love to hear from parents. You can always give us a call at 616-600-957, or you can shoot us a DM in the Mix 957 app like... Hey. You said no strings could secure you at the station. This great solo right here. She was kindness in her dark sound. Forgotten. I walked into vast jungles, yellow moonbeams. I don't know the, I don't know the words to this song. I'm just vamping. Likely it would have been closer to 39 ish, is my guess. Yeah, again, doesn't matter. Well, I just want you guys to know that a very sweet listener. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Go away. I got a story to tell. And his human soul. Your kids to go to. Oh. So that they. To exhale. Gotta be a tote bag. <laughs> Michigan Radio. Dot org slash donate. Oh, yes. This is either Cardi B or Nicki Minaj. I can never tell them apart. Ever gone permanently in one comfortable bed. All right, that's it. Hey, yo, I hate that bit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hey, yo. Not Cardi B or Nicki Minaj. Megan the Stallion, perhaps. All right. Uh, thank you to Frank Fuss from My Policy Shop Insurance. Now, if you are like me, self employed, or between jobs, or maybe your employer does not offer health insurance, it's absolutely possible for you to get health insurance. Obamacare, I love Obamacare. If it weren't for Obamacare, I would not be able to have insurance. But navigating it can sometimes be a struggle. Have Frank do it for you. And it doesn't cost you a dime. Frank's services are free. Frank is a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. His website is mypolicyshop.com because that's what he does. He shops around for the right policy through the marketplace for you. Phone call goes like this. He's going to ask you some questions. You're going to answer them. Uh, Okay, I can get you this, uh, this gold insurance policy through Priority. I can get you this silver through Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I've got another, I got a bronze one also from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, what's the difference, Frank? Well, the lower the deductible, the greater the coverage, the bit higher the premium. And you're like, oh, what? This all sounds fucked up. Yeah, Frank takes care of all that shit. I can't possibly afford that. Yes, you can. If you just shut up and let somebody do the work for you, you'd be able to get further in life. Frank's going to help you with everything. If I can get insurance, you can get insurance. Anyway, um, if you want to, if you need help navigating the marketplace, Frank is the man. 
I talk about several things that Frank does. And in, in addition to helping with the marketplace, he's uh, fantastic when it comes to getting started or uh, upgrading your Medicare that you or your loved ones may have, or maybe you're getting ready to have. Or if you or someone you know or love is getting set to access their social security benefits. These are all things that Frank can help with. Trying to do that shit on your own is a pain in the ass. So wouldn't it be better if someone just did it for you and you didn't have to pay for it? That's how it works with Frank. He does not make money from you. He makes money from insurance companies who love people like Frank because he puts people in their policies. That's how it works. Thank you. Uh, Joe Martinez. The uh, love affair continues with uh, Senor Martinez from A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. That is 616-516-8579. Today was the day that I turned on the furnace for the first time since spring. I was waiting for that smell, you know, that, that unmistakable burning dust smell. Uh, I didn't get it, though. I was kind of disappointed. I really like this time of year, though, when it's starting to really cool nights, warm enough days. That, by the way, makes for a fantastic um, uh, fall color display here in the great state of Michigan. I'll be going up for the fall colors. There's nothing better than a countryside full of blazing reds, yellows, and oranges. Oh, my God. I love it so much. Uh, but anyway, I digress. A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. That's 616-516-8579 for Joe Martinez. Anything you need, heating and cooling, especially tuning up the furnace. Now, I fired mine up without Joe tuning it up, so I'm kind of rolling the dice. Uh, but he'll be at my house, before you know it, giving me the annual uh, tune-up job. He gives me a tune-up job, and then he gives me an AC job. He's all about giving me jobs. Joe Martinez is. Thank you to him, as always. Okay, some of you may remember hockey, legendary hockey coach Mike Babcock. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about sports, and you don't care about hockey or anything. It doesn't matter. This story is unbelievable. Oh, my God. Now, first of all, Mike Babcock, I think he won a Stanley Cup with Anaheim and then with the Red Wings. He had a, uh, a strong run of success with the Red Wings. Uh But then as time passed and he wore out his welcome, he then, uh, I think he went to like Toronto or something like that. Uh, A lot of stories started to come out about how he was such a ball breaker that some of the players got like fucked up. You know, um, like back in the day, if you, if the coach was an asshole, you know, you didn't really hear about the aftermath, but nowadays you hear about this, this all the time where players uh, get treated like shit. And it, I, I don't know. It, they, they kind of uh, get messed up in the head. I think uh, one guy's name was um, Johan Franzen for the Red Wings. Yeah, there you go. Tyler says that Babs being a dick fucked up Johan Franzen. He was a, uh, a terrific player. And then when the, his career ended, it came out that he, he felt like he was uh, so abused and bullied that it, it ruined it for him. It messed him up in the head. Babcock denies it. Then he goes to uh, Toronto. Now I, I don't follow the Leafs, but I do follow. I was following a guy by the name of Mike Commodore. Mike Commodore is a former hockey player who uh, was prominent on, social media at the time. And he was all about Babcock getting fired. And, um, he would chronicle the shit that this guy did. And eventually Babcock again, wore out his welcome in Toronto. I think it's like, he's really talented coach and he gets players to play for him and win, but at an exp at a cost. 
I was talking to some friends of mine who actually play minor league hockey in the American Hockey League, and I and I asked them about this exact thing. I go, "What's going on here? Do coaches?" Um, because when I was growing up, the coach was always kind of like an asshole. I mean, I grew up watching Scotty Bowman. Now, I don't know how much different Scotty Bowman was from Mike Babcock, but I don't really recall any type of uh, accusations of abuse about Scotty Bowman. So was he doing it and nobody gave a shit or was he just not being abusive or were they, were the players cut from a different cloth back then? What I'm saying is, are they pussies now? Um, And so my question was, I go, do players or do coaches kick and scream and yell and uh, uh, belittle players? And it was Joey Hickens. He goes, not so much these days. Um, so he implied that it used to happen and now it doesn't. I don't know. Well, there's a very, very famous podcast that covers hockey called Spit and Chicklets with Paul Bissonette and Ray Whitney. I think those are their names. And um, they started to talk. Because uh, Babcock got another gig in July. The Columbus Blue Jackets made him their head coach. Well, he was fired. He hasn't even coached a game. Or he he was forced to resign. (laughs) And people are like, what the fuck is going on here? There's two different stories. There's the story that Spit and Chicklets is saying. These two guys that aren't affiliated with Babcock, but all they do is talk for a living on a podcast, both former players. And uh, then there's Babcock's story. Now, the story of uh, that the Spit and Chicklets guys have said, I think has been corroborated by younger members of the team. And the story goes that um, Babcock is, I guess, when he interviews someone who they're thinking about bringing in from another team or maybe drafting, Babcock, according to Bissonette, will say, give me your phone. I need to see what type of a person you are. I want to see your pictures. And that's the way they painted it. As he's like going into their, their fight, grabbing the phone and looking at the pictures. I don't know what the fuck he's looking for. Um, But, well, this got back to the league and then the team and he's out. Babcock is fired. Oh my God. This is a uh, CBC news story about all of this. There you go. He hasn't coached a single game with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and Mike Babcock is already out as head coach. Have you heard what Babcock is up to again? All because of explosive allegations from two former NHLers, now podcasters. Let me see the photos in your phone. I want to know the type of person you are. Paul Bissonette said on his popular Spitting Chicklets podcast, Babcock... There's the rear admiral. Hawk demanded to see his players' personal photos during one-on-one meetings. What do you what do you do? Say no? Like then all of a sudden you're in one with the coach. The season hasn't even started. You know what I'm saying? Babcock confirmed he did ask to see the photos, but said the accusations misrepresented the situation, that it was a way to get to know the players better. Over time, some of the younger members of- <laughs> Hey, I want to get to know you better. Give me your phone way to get to know the players better over time some of the younger members of the organization expressed some concern um, with with their dealings with mike babcock late sunday babcock resigned saying in a statement i know it's in the best interest of the organization for me to step away at this time the nhl players association says the decision to move forward with a new coach was the appropriate move in a statement it says our players deserve to be treated with respect in the workplace It's not the first time Babcock's coaching methods have been questioned. As head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, he made then 19-year-old Mitch Marner rank his teammates and revealed the rankings to the players. Oh, no. Fired from that job, Babcock spent four years on the sidelines. Hired by the Blue Jackets just this summer, Babcock said he'd learned his lesson. 
Some have defended him, calling it old school coaching. Others say it crosses a line. I think the younger players entering the league have a different expectation for you know how they might interact with a coach, the kind of feedback they get, the way that feedback is delivered. I would be stunned if we saw Mike Babcock coach another game in the NHL. <laughs> All this just three weeks before the puck drops on a new NHL season. Sarah Levitt, CBC News, Montreal. Fucking A. That's incredible. Um, you guys won two Stanley Cups. I don't know. I, uh, I'm on the fence on Babcock. I can't. It might be these players are just pussies. That could very well be. Um, the future Mrs. Shoreliners, that would be Hurricane Ashley says, I can't wait to hear Tim rant about this. Boy, yeah, I, I, I'm actually anxious to hear what he says about that. That would be uh, Tim Mayer, a retired American Hockey League referee. Kabubi 69, that would be Rich, said he's looking to see if they play for the other team, if you know what I mean. Sausage over taco, guys. That's what Mike Commodore said last night. Okay, come on now. There is a follow-up to this. Babcock said, um, upon reflection, it has become clear that continuing as head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets was going to be too much of a distraction. Babcock said in a statement, while I'm disappointed to not have the opportunity to continue the work we've begun, I know it's in the best interest of the organization for me to step away at this time. I wish everyone in the organization well in the upcoming season. Yeah, he didn't write that. That's not what he wanted to say. They're just trying to get the cleanest break possible. Blue Jackets general manager Yarmo Kakalinen called it a difficult but necessary decision to ensure our focus remains on the players and the team's upcoming season. My God. Uh, I tell you what, this is big for Bissonette and Whitney because they absolutely did this. They brought this to life. And if they if uh it, if there's not any truth to it, then they have a lawsuit on their hands. If Mike Babcock, who just lost a career job trying to get back into coaching, suddenly now is officially done. There's no way this guy will he's had now this would be his third opportunity. Fucked it up in Detroit. Everybody hated him. He fucked it up in Toronto. And now, before he even gets started in Columbus, he fucks it up. Um, while meeting with our players and staff, I asked them to share. Both Babcock and Jenner um, called the allegations a misrepresentation of what had actually happened. When they say Jenner, um, that is the uh, player that was being interviewed. I don't even know the guy's real his first name. Boone Jenner. Babcock asked Blue Jackets captain Boone Jenner to show him photos on his phone to, quote, let him know the type of person you are. Both Babcock and Jenner called the allegations a misrepresentation of what had actually happened. While meeting with our players and staff, I asked them to share off their phones family pictures as part of the process of getting to know them better. Babcock said in a statement last week, there was absolutely nothing more to it than that. The way this was portrayed on the Spit and Chicklets podcast was a gross misrepresentation of those meetings and extremely offensive. These meetings have been very important and beneficial, not only for me, but for our players and staff as well. And to have them depicted like this is irresponsible and completely uh, inaccurate. Well, it sounds to me like Mike Babcock's going to lawyer up and the Spit and Chicklets empire should be getting a uh, notice of lawsuit very soon. I mean, that makes sense, right? Uh, Boone Jenner is 30. He's a 10-year NHL veteran. He also denied those allegations and backed up Mike Babcock's statement. He said, 
Yeah, I was meeting with Babs. He asked me about my family and where I'm from. He asked me about my upcoming wedding and some hockey-related stuff, Jenner said. He then asked if I had pictures of my family, and I was happy to share some with him. He showed me pictures of his family. I thought it was a great first meeting and a good way for us to start to build a relationship. To, to have this blown out of proportion is truly disappointing. Well, motherfucker, that is uh, that is uh, uh, not at all what they depicted on that news story. You had that TSN reporter saying, oh, yeah, everybody hates them. All the young players hate them. Well, that doesn't sound like it to me at all. I think there's a lot more here that needs to be investigated. And the, and the uh, Blue Jackets and the NHL better be damn sure that they have all of their uh, let their T's crossed and their I's dotted here because mother fuck our players deserve to be treated with respect in the workplace as Marty Walsh NHLPA executive director said in a statement to CNN unfortunately this was not the case in Columbus the club's decision to move forward with a new head coach is the appropriate course of action last week the NHLPA traveled to Columbus to investigate the allegations against Babcock well, I, you would think that the uh, words of the guy, uh, uh, Boone, uh, whatever the fuck his name was, Boone Jenner, that that would, that would carry as its fucking team captain. Is he, is he making it up? Is he lying? My God. Yeah, I, uh, I refuse to jump in and uh and throw babcock under the bus not that it matters some piece of shit podcaster for the middle of nowhere but this sounds like a fucking bad deal to me uh, not that i'm the biggest mike babcock fan in the planet on the planet or anything but uh sounds to me like uh unless there's something we don't know cole says most of the hockey media was calling them clowns last week when they broke the story bissonette and whitney yeah, Bissonette's a piece of shit. If you've ever listened to that guy, he's a fucking psychopath. Tyler said, I've heard other shitty stories about Bab- Babcock on Chicklets. He's an asshole. Yeah, well, that's Chicklets. I've heard that show too. Bissonette seems like a psychopath. Young Adam Schwab says, referring to our news story, this is the most Canadian reporter ever. Tyler says from former players that were on the show. I mean, well, maybe, I don't know. I can't speak to that. That doesn't mean that he, I, any, any of things like that doesn't mean that somebody gets hired or fired or any of that shit dealing with the facts of the case. All I know is this, I've got hearsay about what he was doing. And I've got the guy who actually offered up his phone say, Oh yeah, it was totally cool for that. He gets fired. That's bullshit. I don't know if I like that at all. Okay, folks, I want you to hold still. Your old pal EZ needs to go tinkle. By the way, I used to interact with Babcock, and he was always very nice at Van Andel Arena when he was coaching the Red Wings, being that I've been there at that place for almost 20 years. Uh, I've seen all these coaches come and go, and Babcock was always uh, the sweetest and most polite. It has nothing to do with hockey, but it was always like, hey, boys, hey, boys. Hey, boys, how are you, boys? That's what these Canadians do. They always talk to you like that. Oh, hey, boys. How you doing, boys? Hey, gang, how are you? Um, even if you're a, an American and you hang out with Canadians, that's how you talk. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, good to see you, eh? Uh, Hurricane Ashley says, I bet Tim would take a, take your call. If you want a sports rant, he's a perfect example, Tim from shoreliners because he's from Ohio, but he's grown up with Canadians eh, his whole life. So, Hey Zayner, how are you? Oh, Hey Zayner. What's up Zayner? I mean, salt of the earth. He's so sweet. He has to be because he puts up with that pain in the ass. No offense. Zayner. Hey, yo. What's up, buddy? Uh, I'm just talking about Mike Babcock. 
Oh, geez, yeah. What was uh? What? Did you ever um uh, ref when you see him walk? And because he would show up at the rink back in the day when he was coaching the Red Wings. Do you have any uh? Do you have any uh, interactions with him? Uh, no, I didn't. Assistants that have gone on to be head coaches, I had interactions with them. So his disciples. All right, I'm 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 really thrown off by this story because um, Boone Jenner, the captain of the Blue Jackets, said, "Oh no, it was a totally fine interaction. I I I didn't have a problem with anything." And that now, but he's still out, and I I'm thoroughly confused here. I mean, I've heard stories about Babcock, but I can't believe that he would after a horrible experience in Toronto, immediately show up in Columbus without doing or saying, coaching a game and screw everything up this quickly? Well, he's an old school guy. And I, I don't think that you, you, the old saying, you can't teach a dog new tricks. I, I, I just, when Mike is a proven winner, Right? I mean, you can't take away uh, a world championship, an Olympic gold, and a Stanley Cup. Like, there's not many guys that can say that they've won. So he's a proven winner. But his methods are old and outdated. They're not effective anymore. And to be honest, I don't think you can win like that anymore. With with what happened with the Mitch Marner thing in Toronto and, and, and those types of things, um, I yeah, I, I saw that. Boone Jenner said it was harmless and he was trying to learn about his family and whatnot. But I think when you have the younger generation of players and whatnot, um, especially when you bring in cell phones and those things uh, like that, and you're trying to evade people's privacy, I mean, it goes back to basically the same thing you wanted to do in Toronto is just out people right. for things that had nothing to do with the game of hockey whatsoever. Okay, I get you. Well, um, it's interesting, though, that Boone Jenner, though, said it's it wasn't a problem. It was just, hey, here's my wife. Here's my kids. I think through through his time in the NHL, he, you know, he, he's made a lot of enemies. And I know there's a lot of guys with an axe to grind with him. Okay. And so I think that's why how it got so, you know, blown out of proportion in the media. And, you know, once the snowball gets rolling down the hill. I think both sides were like, well, we better just pull the cord now. Uh, wow. Because we already have a huge distraction before the season's even going to start. That's incredible. What a what a big piece of news. And it was all blown up because of Bissonette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Biz, see, remember, remember when uh, Tommy, um, remember when Mike Commodore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whole year, remember when he played? He signed a ticket with the Wings, and he played the whole year in GR. Nicest right. guy in the world. Right. Nicest guy in the world. But remember, he, he asked when he signed in Detroit, he asked Babs, he asked Kenny Holland, is is, is he going to bury me? He said, no, 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 no. You're not going to bury you. You're going to get a fair shot. You're going to be a 3 4 defenseman here. You know, play play on the right side of Nick Lindstrom. You know, easy. Okay. And he came to camp and immediately Tommy said he buried him. Yep. Well, Biz and all those guys on Chicklets you know, made it big news. Those guys are all Mike Commodore's best buddy. Okay. So it all adds up. It all, it yeah. all makes sense. Oh, yeah. So, like, they, they can't stand bad <laughs> So. All right. Well, uh, sorry. I just wanted to get your voice on this. Uh, some, some chick who likes you in the chat said you'd be fun to talk to about this topic. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate it, buddy. Hey, I think she likes you. I think she, I think she's got a. I think she's sweet on you. Yeah, I'm sweet on her. Too. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, oh. as you say, we've been getting along swimmingly. Yes, you sure have. That's. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to see that. It's like you two are like peas and carrots. Yeah, just like uh, Forrest and Jenny. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, good. Have a good day, striping parking lots and athletic fields. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right, peace. There you go. That is uh, Tim Mayer. Uh, yeah, that was good. That was a good suggestion to get him on. Oh, hey, Zayner. Oh, hey. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, you know, Babs. Uh, Babs uh, has got a lot of people that have an, uh, an axe to grind with Babs, you know. There's always that uh, energy with people who uh, speak Canadian.
And uh, it, and Timmy Mayer, oh yeah, Timmy Mayer has that Canadian vibe to him. Um, you know, Ashley here thinks she's going to um, uh, through marriage, uh, get half of the Shoreliner striping empire. She's got her sights set on on that whole marriage thing. And and it sh- it should be that way. I think it's mutual. In fact, I guarantee it's mutual. How fantastic is that? All right. Now I have to go tinkle. I swear I need to go tinkle. I'll be right back. Oh, hey, Zayner. Oh, yeah. Babs and his outdated coaching techniques, eh? <clears throat> it's a bummer that's uh crazy to uh be looking at your uh be 60 years old and you're kicked out of your career and blacklisted and no chance of being able to get into the uh, industry that you loved wait i had a conversation yesterday speaking of that with uh, some of you may remember the name uh, Tony Gates. Remember Tony Gates? Uh, when I was on BBL, he was on mornings on uh, LAV. He's no longer on mornings on LAV. He's, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He got fired for something. Uh, I'm very, I know exactly what happened, but I, I can't say. Um, uh, I talk all the time with Michelle and Travis and, and Greg for that matter, Greg Henson. And uh, so I, I know what's up, but, uh, the mum's a word from your old pal EZ, but give you an idea of some of the discussions that can happen when you talk to Tony Gates. I remember there was one time when uh, we were in the same building and, uh, you know, Small talk. I remember one time. <laughs> hold on. Let me back up. There's one story. It's like five in the morning. Shows haven't even started yet. And I'm sitting there half awake at my desk. And he's announcing to everybody that it's his birthday. Like I can hear him in the hall saying, yeah, it's going to be a big birthday show, baby. Yeah. And he's, ta- he's, he's actually announcing that it's his birthday. He's a 75-year-old man, whatever. And then Uncle Buck, God rest his soul, was still on the show with him and he's getting annoyed because Tony's uh, telling everybody that it's his birthday. And so Buck comes down the hall and I go, Hey Buck. Yeah, it was easy. Did you hear it's Tony's birthday? <laughs> like that. And Buck just starts laughing. So Tony knows I'm making fun of him. And, uh, that was it. That was he. All that degree of the, this thin skin fucking twat. You see, he hears it. I knew he heard it. I did it. Because I knew he was gonna hear it. That's why I did it. He sticks his head. He goes, "You know what, Zane? I'll tell you what. Fuck you, Zane. Fuck you." And he's just motherfucking me up and down over that. And that was it. Um, we never really. Well, we didn't have a relationship before that, but you know. So he he fucking can't take the heat prior to that though there was one discussion i tried to like um i tried to play nice for as long as i could there was one moment i walked up to him and uh he uh well we we didn't play any music on bbl we would just talk it was a fucking talk show and i think he oftentimes wanted that but he's not really equipped for it so he would play songs and music and then uh He's talking about that. He's said, yeah, I, I kind of like it, you know? I mean, kind of way to reset. You know, play a few tunes. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's because you have no ability whatsoever to do a talk show. But I'm like, oh, yeah. And it uh, it, it sounds great, Tony. I'm just kissing his ass. I, I just want this conversation to end. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Well, and you're a winner, too. I mean, show sounds great, Tony. Uh, in fact, the whole radio station sounds great. And he looks at me dead serious and he goes, it's because I built it, baby. I built it from the ground up. That's how you do it. And I'm like, who the fuck says that? What the fuck? Is that really a converse? Did I just have a conversation with you where you're telling me, that's right, baby, because I built it. I built it from the ground up. 
Anyway, I'm at the golf outing yesterday for the Grand Rapids Gold. A ton of people. There was so much fun. Uh, and uh, Ryan says that's very Ron Burgundy like. Chris says, is that the show that shared the booth with Ben and they were always loud when you went to him? Yes. Yes, he would keep his door open. He was the only show that kept his studio door open. So they're in there carrying on and their audio would bleed into Ben's studio and I could hear them on my show. So I asked, I go, is it possible you guys close the door? And man, that... I got in so much trouble over that because I asked them to close their door. Can you believe that? And it was all because of Tony. It had nothing to do with Michelle. Um, but I'm uh, at this golf outing and I see a friendly, familiar face. And it's Tony's ex-wife. He's got like 50 ex-wives. And this one in particular, her name is Kathy. I go, Kathy, oh my God, how are you? You're doing great. Oh my God, I'm so glad. And she's telling me what she's doing. She's giving me a life update. And she goes, are you doing a podcast with Tony? I go, your ex-husband, Tony? Yeah, that's what he's telling everybody. I go, "Uh, fuck and no. I go, I can't stand that guy. And if you see him, tell him I said that. No, I'm not doing a podcast with Tony. Why the fuck would I do a podcast with Tony? I don't even like Tony. He's a dipshit. And there's a lot of uh, horrible reasons why I don't like Tony. In addition to the, I haven't even, I just scratched the surface about Tony. I'm not going to tell you why the real reasons why I don't like Tony. That guy's a fucking asshole. And uh, so, you know, she's an ex-wife for a reason. She goes, oh, that's what I thought. I go, no, no, there's no one's going to do a, have Tony do his own fucking podcast. Talk about fucking birds and ducks unlimited and all that other bullshit that he would nauseate people with for fucking decades. Fuck him. That's some bullshit right there. Why the fuck would I do a fucking podcast with Tony Gates? Ryan says, why on earth would he be telling people he's doing a podcast with you? I have no fucking idea. But I'm going to nip that one in the bud. Do you say nip it in the butt or nip it in the bud? And where did that come from? No. Do your own fucking podcast. Holy shit. I cannot imagine doing it. I don't like the idea of doing po- a podcast with someone I like. Let alone someone who A, I don't like, and B, sucks. What a crock of shit. All right. Um, We had our pal uh, 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 Tim Mayer on there just a second ago. Oh, hey, Zayner. Now, I guess he's like butthurt over Michigan State because he's... He's like an alumnus. In fact, at Michigan State, they have like a uh, like a wall of fame. And like he's on it. Being that he went to the school, uh, a terrific uh, uh, hockey career, and then a terrific uh, refing career. And then I think it says uh, Spartans in the Olympics or something like that. And they got like uh, a giant statue bust of Tim Mayer. You know, and his stripes blowing the whistle. Get in the box. Uh, the Spartan Hall of Fame, it's him. So he goes to all the games and, um, you know, wears his green and white. And the Spartans started out the football season 2-0, and so he's excited for that. And then the coach gets busted for... Um, jacking off with a rape survivor who doesn't want him jacking off on the phone or so we're led to believe that's the story the spartans hire a rape survivor to tell the team that no means no her name's brenda tracy she has an organization called set the example her life's work has been to teach people not to be pieces of shit she's brought in by these 
And and this is great for Michigan State to bring in Brenda Tracy because uh, there's been all sorts of shit over the years with uh, football players assaulting chicks, and then you got the Nasser thing. So, all right, we're going to turn the corner. We're going to bring in Brenda Tracy. She's going to teach our guys not to rape chicks. It's going to be awesome. And then next thing you know, the football coach is pounding his pud, uh, which she can actually hear hands sliding over crank, over wet crank, uh, over the phone. This happened. She's like, oh, my God, are you actually doing this? Oh, my God, it's fucking terrible. Put your dick away. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, They suspend Mel Tugger. And uh, then the football team goes out and gets demolished by Washington. Oh, hey, Zayner, it's bad news for my Sparties, eh? Oh, no, I'm feeling bad now, eh? My God. Um, Well... Now they're firing him and they announced, Hey, we're firing you unless if you can prove otherwise, why we shouldn't fire you. I wish I had that luxury when all the times I've been fired. Corey says, what did he do wrong though? Well, it depends on, uh, well, according to the Michigan state investigation, uh, he was on the phone with that chick And then she's like, oh, I'm really excited about teaching your kids about how not to rape girls. And then he pulled out his dick. And the Spartan brass, I guess they believe it. And so that's that. You have embarrassed the university. You have hurt our image. That's all it takes in this day and age. Doesn't have to be a legal thing. And they're firing him With cause. He is owned. He is owed. Okay. It was a five year, $95 million deal. That the only thing that could make it that he could be fired without any money would be if he embarrassed the program or did something horrible. They think he did. So that's the end of Mel Tugger. My God. Now, if it's, if Tucker is like, or Tucker is like, oh, no, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't do it. Well, then I guess he's going to sue everybody, right? Uh, the notice provides Tucker with seven calendar days to respond and present reasons uh, to me and the interim president as to why he should not be terminated for cause, said Athletic Director Allen holler in a statement released by the school. If Tucker does not present sufficient reasons to dispute multiple contract violations, the school will fire him September 26, three days after the program's big 10 oper opener oper in what was hoped to be a bounce back year for the Spartans. If he's fired for cause, the school does not owe him a dime. Tugger, his agent, and his attorney did not immediately return messages seeking comment. Holler said the decision does not affect the ongoing investigation into Tracy's allegations of sexual harassment, which is being handled by the school's Office for Civil Rights. Brenda Tracy said Tucker sexually harassed her during a phone call in April 2022. Several months later, Tracy filed a complaint with the school's Title IX office and the investigation was completed in July. A hearing is scheduled for the week of October 5 to determine if Tucker violated the school's sexual harassment and exploitation policy and the ruling could take up to 60 days. Tucker says, oh yeah, I was in fact pounding my pud. He has admitted to pud pounding. What an embarrassment. Can you imagine to just have to like... um, uh, 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 quantify that and say, yes, I was absolutely pounding my pud and it was consensual. I mean, that in itself is an embarrassing thing to announce to the world that you were jacking off to, to this. And e- e- even if it was consensual, I think that that's an embarrassment, right? <laughs> what a fucking mess. If your best play is to say, hell yeah, I was jacking off consensually. I do it all the time. 
If that's your best play, just... Oh, God. Tracy's allegations were made public by USA Today earlier this month. A 51-year-old tugger who is estranged from his wife and has two kids. I got to get... I wish I could be a fly on the wall at the Tugger household with Mrs. Tugger and the Tugger children. I hope that they're like older, you know, the Tugger kids are like in their twenties. I doubt that they are. I mean, I guess they could be. I wish that they're, I mean, I don't want them to be like eight. Can you imagine if Mel Tucker's kid is at school and, uh, and, and the other kids are like, ah, your dad's jacking off and on phones. I mean, that would be just, Oh, Putting your kids through that because you can't keep your cock in your pants, you asshole. What the fuck is wrong with you? Stupid fucker. And if you are going to do this, if you are going to behave like that, in this day and age, you got to you gotta get like uh, audio confirmation that she's down. Hey, uh, yo, I'm uh, getting ready to whip out my dick. Uh, can you please say into the phone I am recording this? that you want me to whip out my dick and stroke it feverishly until I jizz. Yo. You got to get that shit on tape. You got to get proof that you're allowed to whip out your dick. I mean, because at the worst, if you say, yo, I'm getting ready to whip out my dick. It is not yet out. But if you give me consent to whip out my dick, I am going to whip out my dick and it's going down. And then she has to say, yes, please whip out your dick. Then he's covered. People have to cover their tracks when they're getting ready to whip out their dicks like that. That's, that's, uh, especially if you're worth like that amount of money, you want to make sure you don't do anything that can get you in trouble. But if she says, no, I, I'm not interested in you whipping out your dick. Okay, then. Um, can you imagine? I don't know if the Michigan State game is going to be. Well, it doesn't matter. Wherever Michigan State plays on the road, the torment that is going to be uh, bestowed upon the Spartans because of Tucker. So that's what they mean. You greatly embarrassed our school. Tucker began his coaching career with Nick Saban as a graduate assistant for the Spartans. I didn't know that. For the Spartans in 1997. Returned to the school with one of the biggest contracts in sports. After leading Colorado for one season and serving as an assistant head coach at Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. If the Spartans, if they had the ability to, after one season at Colorado, lure Deion Sanders, that would be exceptional. He is so charismatic and dynamic he is his uh ability to uh recruit Deion sanders he's a special recruiter and turning out to be a pretty decent coach from what i'm understanding and he brings you a swagger and attention the right type of attention Deion sanders that's what that's the uh prize after this college football season When Colorado finishes the year, probably a top 10 or top five school. Colorado knows that he's one and done. He's going to wind up in one of the biggest programs in the country. Michigan state, you better, you better get ready to break out the fucking wallet and get a guy like Deion Sanders over there. That's, that's the smart play. Start now. Rich says Eric Zane has the same black guy voice for every black guy. I don't know about that. Uh, Corey is full of some of the most horrible jokes he's ever thrown out. He sucks, Corey. But it's to a point now where I don't even read them because they're so bad. Corey goes down the road of, I'm just going to say whatever I want and hope something sticks. I think I need to put you on a personal probation. Like I'll just understand that if you're saying it, 
It sucks. Um, Maureen says she doesn't care for Deion Sanders. Why? He's perfect. I love him. I always love Deion Sanders. That's the type of guy you want. You want that guy who's obnoxiously proud. Who doesn't give a shit. What I, the whole uh, 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 hat and sunglasses thing. Oh my God. It's fantastic. Corey wins some redemption points. Even after I just said I wasn't going to read his thing. He could have just stroked himself quietly. And all of this could have been avoided. That's the real lesson here. Yeah. He didn't have to announce that he was beating his meat. He could have just said, mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Coach, did you just jizz? Uh-uh. All right. Maureen says, I just don't like him. Too flashy. That's like saying he's too black. That's a horribly racist thing that you're saying there. Too flashy? What the fuck is wrong with you? He's just too flashy. It's a horribly racist thing to say. Thank you to uh, the one and only Throat slash Dale from Superior Cleaning and Power Washing, 231-740-4098. If you need anything Power Wash, you call Dale, 231-740-4098. If you are in West Michigan, whether it's a landscaping, driveway, fucking roof, house, you name it. Also, he cleans hoods at restaurants. You know those things over where the fryers are and the grill is? They need to be cleaned regularly, and they can only be cleaned by a licensed, skilled professional. That is Dale. Uh, if you are in the restaurant business or know someone who is, Superior Cleaning and Power Washing, 231-740-4098. I almost forgot. Uh, Matthew sent me an email about the MSU thing because I had been big about I had made several comments about, oh my God, Michigan State, they're covering it up, covering it up. They've known since December. They've known, they concluded their Title IX investigation in July. They're covering it up. They're covering it up. Not so. He writes, Eric, Michigan State could not make a comment on the case involving Tucker unless the victim came forward or someone leaked the info. She voluntarily went to USA Today a couple weeks ago, but actually did not want the story published and now claims someone leaked the information to a different source, which is a huge confidentiality legal issue. And MSU needs to find out if someone at the university did it because they need to be punished. Did not know that. That's crazy that Matthew's filling me in on this and not the school. The school isn't talking about it. Hence the investigation on the leak. The investigation has been handled appropriately as outlined by many people who understand Title IX investigations. They couldn't suspend or publicly investigate Tucker prior to someone else making it a public matter. He adds, don't get your information from huge. Then uh, he makes a false claim and calls Bill a fat, gay, racist U of M homer who struggles to stay employed. It's a horrible thing to say about Billy. I do not support that comment. And that's not true. Bill is not fat. He's not gay. He's not a racist. He is a U of M homer. And he doesn't struggle to stay employed. I take umbrage with those accusations you're saying about my friend. Uh, I said, I did not know this. I'll correct the info on the podcast. He says, don't worry about correcting it, though. It's super complicated the way they they have to handle it. And for once, MSU was doing it right and still getting dragged through the mud by clickbait journalists who don't know the first thing about how this stuff works. Yeah, I guess I would fall into that, uh, that category. As Darla has now procured her water bowl and is chewing it, on the couch in what is a rather cute moment. 
Uh, that's not a toy. That's a that's a bull. I think she wants some water. Is what I think she's telling me. Hey, we're a little thirsty over here. Could you get us some water? Uh, I've got to go get her some water. So I'm gonna. I'm going to do that. I got another story I want to share with you. Right back. Can you imagine if you were um, a high school football player and you just won the big game and your mom's like a total MILF and she comes running on the field? One of these moms who's, uh, she's only 38, Amber Wright. Her son just won the big football game on uh, the other weekend or whatever. And uh, she's excited. And she comes running on the field. And uh, she congratulates her son. But she does it like this. Um. She is giving, she's straddling him. Hang on a second here. All right, there it is. Wow. There's the kid. He's like, oh, hi, mom. He doesn't seem to be bothered by it. But look at all these other kids. Like, oh, there she is. She's putting her vagina on him. I cannot imagine if my mom, well, first of all, that would be tough if your mom is like, is like a hot mom. I think that that would be difficult because she's, she obviously is, is pretty put together. All right. And so there's just, there's just a lot going on here. Mom writes, this boy will forever and always have my entire heart. Gina captured the end of this moment. And I'm so grateful when I walked up to hug my baby boy after his game, he immediately picked me up and just held me. It may have been 20 seconds, 30 seconds a minute. I have no idea. But in this moment, time stood completely still. I honestly don't know what I did to deserve you. uh, But I am thankful every second of every day for you. Okay, great. Here. That's awesome. And now people are having a problem with it. Now, I don't know if I have a problem with it. Because my mom's not wrapped. Okay. If I was him. He's probably not attracted to his mother sexually. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say uh, that he's probably not, but I'm not 100% sure, sexually attracted to his hot mom. But when you straddle your son like that, uh, you get, you're open to it, and then it's shown for the world on your, I think she's, she might be like an influencer or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. She's got 29,000 followers. Here she is. She's total babe. What's she saying here? I had to jump on here and, um, briefly talk about this reel that's gone viral over the past month. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say the reel in general, cause I'm not going to make any comments or try and justify anything about this drill. It was literally a hug between my son and I. And so if you're one of the people that happens to see something immoral or sexual or wrong with it, then I'm just going to say that's on you. I don't have anything else to say and I'm not going to. Oh, wow. She's high, strong in the vocal fry too. Try and explain my actions. Um, and I'm not going to take it down because I didn't do anything wrong. So what I am going to say though. Well, I, I think we need to ask the boy. I think we need to get the son on there and ask him, did, uh, was there any type of like boner activity that took place? That's who we need to ask. It is, I was talking with a really good friend last night about this and we just have to do better. 
I, I can't believe she thinks that that was an okay thing. I, I, I don't think that that was appropriate at all, especially when you're that fucking hot. I mean, if she were a fucking hag, all right. I mean, maybe, but she's like a total babe. As a society, we have to do better. We have to learn to be more kind to one another and to stop with the double standards. It, it's not. It's it's not about kindness. It's just you were grinding your vagina on your kid and you're hot. Um, I'm a girl who can take a lot of these comments. Like, I have thick skin. I was raised with all boys. Uh, it, would any of... Okay, any of the moms in the audience, would you ever consider straddling your child and hugging them? Um, I'm not someone who's going to lose sleep over them, and I'm not someone who's going to go and you know, hurt herself or do something stupid because of them. But that doesn't mean that if this didn't happen to somebody else, that they very well may not react that same way. Um, I can't take it. Um. All right, I want to go back to the. Now that's just part of it. it. It went on for a while. I mean, my God, how would you react to a dad doing this to his teenage daughter? Just saying. I don't think anyone has an issue with your son picking you up. Just that it appears you're straddling your son. You're also dressed pretty sexy for a high school football game. You're a very good looking uh, young mom with a son in high school. You look amazing and look like you work hard for your physique, but I doubt the same issues would present themselves if you dressed a little differently for a high school football game to each their own said this lady. Uh, Laura says, I'm a single mom and very close to my sons. I hug them in public without hesitation, but straddling them in high heels would cross a line. Neither of us would be comfortable with to each their own, but this appears to be an unusual relationship. This lady says it would have been cute if it was his girlfriend, but not mom. The kid weighs in. Some of you need Jesus. She's my mom. I did pick her up. She didn't jump on me. It was a hug. Get the fuck over it. Well, yeah. So what if you hugged, but she was grinding her vag on you? Pricks. This chick says, I've never seen a uh, football mom wear high heels. Uh, to a football game. My son's been playing football for 12 years. Not once have I wore heels to this to his football game or seen another mom wear high heels or dress like she does to, to a teenager's football game. Oh. Mom trying to be a teenager, skin tight, white pants, camisole top, and heels not age appropriate. Yeah. Everybody knows that uh, football moms, hockey moms... You know, they're supposed to wear like hoodies, sweats, Crocs. Not grinding her vagina on your pant on your on your ding dongs. Ryan says if I was one of the dude's friends, I'd be upset she didn't hug me like that. She should have offered the whole team hugs like that. Hold on a second. Darla! No. Uh, Brandis says, oh, please, Lord, don't make me listen to this voice vocal fry. Rich says, nothing wrong with keeping it in the family. That's a horrible comment. Uh, she probably got pregnant in high school if she's asking what she did. That's girlfriend shit. Brandis says, I have a son. I would never. Hold on a second. Don't. No. No. She's about to hump O'Neal. Knock it off. Hold on. Let me finish this, okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? 
And we're having a story about talking about uh, a mom grinding her vagina on her son, and my dog is doing that to her brother. Uh, yeah, I, I have had, it's looking resoundingly like this is just a horrible situation all the way around. Let's hear from the show, hot football mom insider Darla. She doesn't, uh, growl any, at us anymore. I think she's done doing that, but she is pretty damn cute. Oh dear. All right, I think we've kind of exhausted our effort on on hot mom. I think we all agree uh, that was a that was a horrible thing to do. How can you not have the awareness? Brandis says she's a clout chaser and she knows exactly what she's doing. Uh, Patrick says she seems like an excellent manipulator. Tyler says, can you imagine if she was recording this laying in bed and she rolled over to her son lying next to her to ask, you weren't bothered by that, were you? Uh, Clothes-wise, she's in her 30s, not 50s. If you still look good, wear what you want. Oh, all right, great. But at a high school football game? Yeah, I think she's got a problem. Uh, I do not check emails during the show. I will check it after the show, but apparently it must have been cold on the football field, according to Ryan. That will be something we can review on the Patreon. Get her Instagram name so we can get her OnlyFans link is also being suggested. Uh, I can't support that. Today's asshole of the day is brought to you by TC Paintball. Um, Still waiting on Rick about the upcoming Paintball War number 23. Hopefully we can get that done soon enough. Yesterday it was the cop who tased the band director. Still cannot get over that story. Uh, It could be one of several people that could be the asshole of the day today, but I'm just going to go with uh, hot mom is the asshole of the day. She was hot, though. There's no question. There you go. Hot mom is your asshole of the day. That kid is going to, holy fuck. He's going to get so much abuse. He better be like a a, a pretty good fighter because he's probably going to get into a fight with his friends because they're going to dog him. I mean, talk about some ball busting. If you go viral because uh, you're you're in a doing a sex pose with your mom. Hold on. Darla! No! I set her down and she went right for O'Neal. All right. You, by the way, you ever have uh, do do one of those sex standing up things? It's not bad. Um, I don't know if I do it right now, but uh, especially if you're like a, a young, nimble, uh, totally in shape couple, which we are not. You can do the old uh, a pin her against the wall type of deal, or just if you get like a good, you know, if you get her your hands right, you can totally take her to Pound Town while you're standing. That's kind of what I saw when uh, when I saw those two doing that. All right, have a good one, folks. Till next time, thank you.